And was there any, in terms of your transition from sort of minimum viable sort of leader with making a lot of mistakes to uh, now running an organization with a huge number of employees, what, what's the latest counts like? 1,300, yeah. 1,300 people distributed throughout the world, multiple product lines, 38% of internet sites. Like what do you, what, was there a single book you read or a bit of advice or a course you took or just was there, was there, was there, were there a couple yeah. of things that were just defining moments in your improvement? For me, I, I, I learned from books, probably the best. Yeah. So I, I consider like these authors my mentors, you know, even though I might never ever meet them. Um, yeah. So things that I came across, I had already read a little bit of Plato, but I started to read some of the, the Stoics, Epictetus. Um, my friend Tim's book, I know you're friends with Tim too, The 4-Hour yeah. Work Week. Yeah. 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 Um, Seth Godin books, I don't remember which particular one, but they're all good. Guy Kawasaki did a book called The Art of the Start. Mm -hmm. um, started to read some of the business classics like Good to Great, um, Robert Chiodolini's Influence. Yep. Um, that book's kind of scary in some ways. Yeah, but you want to learn it. So like oh, see sure. when it's been used on you. Yep. Um, I, I think there's Jeffrey Gittemar, Little Red Book on Selling. Uh -huh. And I, I just read books on sales. Um, kind of anything that we were trying to figure out, I just, you know, go to Amazon, order five or six books on it and just read them all. Yep. Um, you know, if there was, what was one example of that? There was something where I ended up going down a rabbit hole and reading like ISO quality control books or something like, you know, just whatever. Oh, pricing. That was it. Um, like I felt like we weren't doing our pricing right. So I just got six books on pricing and went through them all. I think the one that worked out well was like pricing on purpose. Um, but I also read like the GE book on pricing, or you know, the super corporate stuff. Um, Zen Habits. It was a blogger that led into a book. Probably you know, really good. Uh, I think Leo Balbata was his name. Um, so all these, and you know, I still try to read you know, as many books as I can per year now because I still have so much to learn. And um, it's hard to pick out a few. Black Swan by Nassim Taleb, I feel like was kind of around that time. Hugely influential, not just because it was um, an amazing book on its own right that really changed how I thought about things, but it was a portal to so much other literature. Like he would have dropped so many allusions and references to other books that it was almost like I stumbled into like this magical Aladdin library or something full of treasure. And just everything I took off the shelf was, would blow my mind. Yeah, yeah. I remember uh, when, I, when I first moved to Silicon Valley, uh, Peter Fenton gave me this book, uh, Fooled by Randomness, which was yeah. right before the Black Swan. And it, and it just changed my point of view about you know the the role of the role of chance and probability in everyday life and markets and in uh, business and you know this idea of when you're making a decision to frame it in terms of the different possibilities and sort of you know a, a lot of things can't be known in advance but but the, but the way you tee up the bet that you're making yeah and, and how how do you use information to tell you whether you think that the it's validating the bet that you made versus not rather than just the decision. How do you think of probabilities? You know? Yeah. How do you take your ego out of the decision and not be attached to being right versus not right? Um, so, so yeah, but I'm one, still a decade away from like learning about Charlie Munger, but oh yeah, yeah. You know, I, I think someone gave me a book of like Steve Jobs quotations or Warren Buffett quotations, like all these things. You can find gold everywhere, even like the really cheesy, corny stuff, like a book of quotations. <laughs> like those can be really powerful, and I I do believe in like extracting something from all of them. So a lot of what Automatic was was also just an experiment. Like I read a book like Drive by Dan Pink. He says mastery, autonomy, purpose are more important than anything else for people being happy. It's like, okay, I have, that's the framework. Let's try it out. How do we give people more of those three things and see how it goes? Yep. And, um, you know, one of the things I'm very proud of is like automatics retention rate is off the charts. You know, we have a regretted, regretted attention that the big acquisitions would do. We'll throw it off sometimes, but most years it's like 4%. 5%, which for tech companies is really, really low. Yeah. Um, I think it's because we really invest in these things that, you know, make people f help people feel fulfilled in their work. Yeah. Now, but another thing I, I seem to notice about you, Matt, is that um, you seem to have this trait that a lot of the, 
long-term successful founders that I've seen have, which is you're more of a learn it all than a know it all. And so I've seen some founders get attached to the idea of being right or being the smartest person there or, or feeling sort of an, an imposter syndrome if they don't know. Whereas it, it feels to me like the folks that can go much farther than you'd ever imagine are the people who are just learning all the time. And they, mm -hmm. and they're, you know, they always realize there's more to know and there's always more to learn. And it's like, there's no, nothing wrong with not knowing all the answers. It's, it's, <laughs> there's just more joy in being to learn it all than in trying to keep, keep the, keep the illusion that you, anybody could be a know-it-all. <laughs> I wish I was more of that in my 20s. <laughs> if you were to zoom back, you might see a bit more arrogance or strong headedness back then. Um, but definitely in my 30s now, like that's been probably the, the title of the decade is there's so much more, you know, you just get knocked on your, your butt a few times. Like it's very um, humbling and you really start to realize all the things you don't know versus when you're young and think you know it all and <laughs> really don't. Mm -hmm.